Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We cover everything major league from spring training to the World Series. We've got your favorite club covered from New York to Boston to LA. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline, and I'm really excited because now the we have the preseason. We are getting ready for college basketball. Season for the NBA is about to start. It is just an exciting time because it's on the horizon. We can almost taste it. <laughs> and so as we get ready for the seasons to really, really begin, there is also always a lot of speculation and talk and predictions and things like that, that goes on amongst not only us fans, but amongst players and amongst teams as well. And it always keeps things a little bit fun. I think I've always talked about, um, or have already talked about in a previous episode when fans like will tattoo on themselves before season even starts. Like if they're like a, like, I don't know, like a Hornets fan, like the Hornets are going to win the 2017 championship or just something wild. And it's always teams. Well, to me, it seems like it's always fans of teams that don't really have a chance. I don't know, but I guess if you're a diehard fan, you feel like your team always has a chance. But anyway, so I wanted to discuss something because like I said, so some of these predictions and some of this trash talk starts with players. And this can happen with players at any level. College, I've seen it in high school because like, I mean, in high school it happens. I'm sure it happens in peewees and things like that as well. So it just happens across the board with all types of competitors. And I think honestly, like, amongst all types of sports like it's not just designated just to basketball but I did want to discuss a freshman named Josh Jackson who is was okay well so he was the number one recruit according to rivals for um his class okay and he's going to be with Kansas now Kansas has is like on a really big streak right now they are 12 and oh, when it comes to Big 12 regular season titles, okay? So, and if they win another conference title in 2017, so this season, if they win another one, they would tie with the infamous John Wooden record of 13 conference titles that he set with UCLA, okay? So, it's kind of a big deal. And it, it sucks because... Well, sometimes it does with certain teams when you are a team, a player on a team that has kind of like this legacy. And for instance, right now with um, Kansas, the Jayhawks and things like that, is that they don't want to be the team who ends this infamous streak, right? You always want to be the team, of course, that beats and ends the streak, but you never want to be the team where everybody was like, oh, well, we were 12 and 0 and then they lost or we were on a really good streak and year after year and then they recruited this new guy or they switched coaches, whatever it may be, and they lost. And then everybody's mad and then you remembered as a team that broke the cycle and everybody has to restart, right? So let's take it, take it back to my boy, Josh Jackson. So Josh is, he's a pretty big guy. He's six foot eight, 207. So he's a good size. Of course, nothing, I would expect nothing less for a number one recruit, uh, especially to Kansas. Now, no offense if you're not six, eight, I am just saying like, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he's a big dude and things like that. So now he is actually, um, been in the news not only due to his athleticism and competitiveness on the court but because of during like a recent interview he came out and said I quote we're going for a national championship this year we're also trying to go undefeated 
Hopefully that happens. I know it's hard to do, but we've got the power to do it. So he is basically alluding to saying that this season, the Jayhawks will go 40 and 0. Now, technically, it's not impossible. Nothing is impossible, right? Technically. However, it's never been done. Okay. So even at the professional level, when the Warriors were acting up and beating everybody, and even when they had a historic 73 wins, they didn't win the championship, right? So, I mean, it happens to the best and the worst of us. But my boy Jackson, this is what he has said. This is what he is trying to do. This is his goal. Okay. And um, let's rewind. So back in 2014, 2015, so not that far ago. Um, and so some of you, this is most recent memory. So a lot of us, no matter what your age, if you watch college basketball, you most likely remember this if you're, I don't know, if you've been watching college basketball and you're over the age of like 15, I guess you would be able to recall this easily. But Kentucky came close in 2014, 2015. But, um, and so they were 38 and 0 and everybody was like, wow, this is crazy. This is going to be amazing. This is historic. I remember discussing it with my dad and how shocked and like amazed we were. And um, also even discussing it with some guys at my church as well. But um, then they lost in the semifinal, the national semifinal, okay, the big one, to Wisconsin. So you never know. They were literally so close they could taste it, right? Um, so I don't know. I'm actually excited to see what happens. I hope that they do, of course, get to a good start. And like the the the, the Jayhawks are not a program to um because remember how I mentioned earlier in this episode when I first started talking about this, that a lot of times when fans will tattoo themselves with a team saying that they're going all the way, they don't really have a chance. And we know that they don't really have a chance. Okay. Like it would take some phenomenal act to have that happen. But uh, the Jayhawks are a team that, I mean, like I said, it's not impossible for any team to go 40 and 0. It's just depending. And like he, Jackson, even said they have the power to do it. I mean, I don't see what, I, I know that they're going to be very, very competitive, of course. Um, that's no surprise there. But um, his coach even said, Bill, Coach Bill, he did say that. Um, he is very competitive, that Jackson is very competitive and that he does put his team first and so that he is looking forward to seeing that drive applied once season starts. And I mean, it's always good to have your ex to set your expectation high. You know, I, I don't believe in setting it too low. People people will say set your expectation low so that if you pass it, you've done better than you expected. But no, I don't believe in that. And so I am going to I, I'm looking forward, of course, to see. Hopefully they will at least, I honestly, I think that the one thing that they should be focusing, of course, is not breaking that streak and to set that, to tie the record, excuse me, with John Wooden, Coach Wooden and his UCLA um, historic run over there that he had with 13 in a row. I think that that's a good starting point. And then to go from there trying to be 40 and oak. So I don't know. I mean, it could happen. It definitely, I don't doubt that it could happen. I'm a, I'm a person who believes in the things, the possibility of impossible things. Okay. So we'll see. But now that he has said it, there's also the competition that's going to make sure, because if you are in the big 12, you a want to stop that streak, that conference title streak that the Jayhawks, Jayhawks already have going on. But now that they have a freshman coming in and saying that they're going 40 and 0, I don't know. That just makes me want to really give it to him. I don't know. That's just me. That's so, if I was playing against him and especially if I'm guarding him, I'm making it rough for him every single night. So that's my piece on that with um, my boy Josh Jackson and the Kansas Jayhawks. So we'll keep an eye on them and to see how they are going to be doing this season. I'm really interested to watch them and see, like I said, just to see what happens because um, I also know that sometimes people say, don't talk too soon. You know, you spoke too soon or you jinxed your team, but I'm not saying that he's doing that. I'm just saying, cause if you're a Jayhawks fan, you know, I, I'm not stepping on your toes. I'm just saying that sometimes it's better to let your game do the talking than you doing the talking. I mean, cause if you're always talking instead of showing, I don't know, but that's just me. Anyway, so we're going to cut it to a quick break. And when we come back, I want to discuss Paul Pierce, 
um, actually retiring as a Celtic, believe it or not. So I'm going to bring up some of that conversation as well as the CBA and um, Commissioner Silver and some comments by Carmelo Anthony in regards to the possible opt out that's coming up in December. So keep it locked here. You are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I will be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Pauline, and I wanted to confirm and put to rest um, not say rumors but talk around the league in regards to Paul Pierce and his retirement so we did already discuss in a previous episode that Paul Pierce will be retiring at the end of this season following suit with all the greats of the modern era as they are all um, retiring recently and it seems like this summer there's been a lot of retirements as well as retirement announcements but He has confirmed with Sirius XM NBA in an interview that he had with them that he will actually be retiring a Celtic. So if we, okay, when you say the name Paul Pierce, what do you picture? How do you picture him? Okay, so like when, which goes ahead and tells you exactly why he is going to be retiring a Celtic. When you say the name Paul Pierce, you see the green sweatband. And a Celtics jersey. I mean, if you don't, I, I, you, I don't know if you are new to the sport of basketball, to the league, which I mean, and everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own ideas. Everybody has their own memories of each individual player, especially some of the greats. But like, for instance, Michael Jordan, when you picture Michael Jordan ba- playing basketball, you see him in a Chicago Bulls jersey. You don't see him in a Wizards jersey. Some of you guys might have even forgotten that he played for the Wizards when he came back. Like you don't see, like certain players, you see them in certain jerseys and that's like their iconic look. And it's usually has to do with when they were at their prime. So, um, and I don't know, that's just, that's just for some players, that's how it is. Okay. And so with Paul Pierce, he has um so he spent 15 seasons his first 15 seasons with the celtics okay there he was a 10-time all-star he won the 2008 nba finals mvp okay so he is not um you know he he's a celtic i don't know what other way to explain it okay and so he of course has been around the league in most recent years before now landing in Los Angeles with the Clippers and back with Doc Rivers. He's been united with Doc Rivers. And so he, he, he's a Celtic. Okay. And even he recognizes it. He says to, he even says that he feels that he owes it to not only himself, but the fans to retire a Celtic because he knows that that was the, the height of his career, the height of Paul Pierce, his prime. And when he, I'm sure a lot of his greatest memories um are when he was wearing a Celtics jersey so he will um and and I wanted to share also Doc Rivers cuz like I said he is reunited with Doc Rivers with the uh the Clippers here in LA in California and Doc Rivers says that it's always been in the talks and in the works um officially and unofficially that Paul Pierce would retire as Celtic and that that's where he belongs and that you know they're going to eventually retire his jersey as a Celtic and things like that. And so Doc Rivers, of course, was all for it. And he thought that it was a great idea and he fully supports it. And that he actually was discussing with the Celtics organization to make this a reality. And so at the end of the season, 
Paul Pierce will sign a one-day contract with the Celtics so that he can officially retire, wear the jersey one last time, all of that as a Celtic, which I think is so sweet. I think it's nice. I think it's a testament to not only his career, but also his the lasting impression and his legacy that he has with the Celtics. And even though being traded off of the team that they still clearly have some, at least mutual respect and mutual understanding to what he brought to the organization. And I think that's awesome. I think that's great. It's exciting because for one last time, like I said, he's going to be a Celtic to round it all out. And I think that's a really cool thing that they're allowing him to do and that he wants to do it. And I'm not even a Celtics fan. Okay, I'm a Kings fan. Everybody knows this. Okay, I, I've said it almost every episode. I'm not ashamed. I am a Kings fan. But um, the Celtics, that that was a great, they have a wonderful dynasty over there as well. And honestly, I'll always see Doc Rivers as a Celtic too. Uh, I don't know. That's just me. I will always see him as a Celtics coach like for, and I, it may be because that's what I grew up seeing him as, as a Celtics coach. But anyway, so Paul Pierce will, like I said, retire as a Celtic. I think it's a really cool thing. I don't know if there is going to be much of this happening with other players following suit. I'm sure, like, like I said, you'd have to have a really good rapport with the team and the staff even after leaving or deciding to leave, whatever it may be. So that's going to be pretty cool. That was my piece on Paul Pierce because I am very excited for him. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for it. Like I said, I'm not even a Celtics fan, but I think it's awesome. And I think it's a nice way to round out his career. I did want to go into talks as well as the collective bargaining agreement and what is being discussed and kind of like an update on that between Adam Silver and what he has commissioned himself, commissioner Silver, excuse me, has said in regards to that, as well as Carmelo Anthony. So keep it locked here. You are listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, and we are getting ready to wrap up this episode of the podcast. But before I did that, I wanted to touch on and discuss what is happening as far as negotiations and things like that when it comes to the NBA and the Players Association and some of the things that have been discussed. So it's been the preseason. The preseason has started. And so... um, Commissioner Silver, he's been overseas in China and different things like that, as well as the director of the Players Association. And everybody's kind of busy right now. However, they are negotiating and discussing. They're having a lot of dialogue in regards to coming to a collective bargaining agreement, to coming to an agreement with that. Now, if you remember the 2011 lockout. So we're currently in the agreement that was, um, okay, so let me just backtrack a little bit. So there was a new agreement that was ratified in December, 2011. Now, if you remember, that was the year where basketball never stops. You guys remember that slogan? Basketball never stops. And everybody was wearing that because we were dealing with the lockout and things like that because they couldn't come to an agreement. They couldn't come to terms. And so we did not have basketball for quite some time. And then luckily it resumed back on Christmas day and things like that. Now, if you want to, um, if you, if you, if you don't know about the collective bargaining agreement as it pertains to the NBA, it basically is a contract between the NBA, the commissioner and the team owners. So the 30 team owners, 
um, and the NBA play the NBA Players Association. Okay, and within this agreement, within this contract, some of the things that are covered. Just so you kind, I just want to give everybody kind of like an idea and an understanding of why this is such a big deal and why it does lead to lockouts and things like that. It's because it dictates the contracts, so player contracts the trades rules when it comes to trades revenue distribution okay the the draft it also discusses and sets the parameters for salary caps and other things that have to do with the conduction of the national basketball association okay as it pertains to labor relations so there was the lockout that happened in 2011 Okay, and one of the changes that was added um, is that it, it, it's okay. So it's supposed to take place every like it was set for another ten years, but there is an opt out in December. I believe it's December fifteenth. So that's why there is some discussions happening because if one of either the players or the owners or the commissioner so like the nba or the players if one of them is not happy and opts out or if they don't come to agreement they don't come to terms and they're able to continue on with this agreement or make any changes that suit both parties and all parties involved excuse me then we can potentially experience another lockout and i don't want to deal with that i really don't i don't think anybody really wants to deal with that i thought i i remember that was a really um, not only just like annoying time, but I was always, I was also thinking about people whose jobs were dependent on that lockout ending, you know, like the people that work the stadiums, the vendors, the fans, all of that type of stuff. Okay. So there's a lot of things that get involved when it comes to this. So, um, according to commissioner silver, there have been really good talks and that everybody is kind of happy. At it. He made it seem that, there will be an agreement in that we will be able to get past this hump and that there will not be another lockout and that everybody so far has seemingly been satisfied, but nothing is set yet, okay, um, by either side. So either the NBA and the commissioner, as well as the players and the association, um, the players association, excuse me, just for the difference in purposes. And now... Carmelo Anthony, he is also very involved with the Players Association, and he has been quoted to say that there is an open dialogue between the Players Association and the NBA, and that he believes that um, the, that he doesn't see any reason why before December 15th that things can't be um, worked out, and that they will not they will not have to deal with another lockout and that they everybody will be able to come to terms okay and so he wants to figure out in a solution and they don't want to have any strikes of course that, that that's not anybody's ultimate goal when it comes to this and that they want to try to make sure everything is gets done and that everybody is receptive okay and he says that and and i rightfully so because the thing is which of course, again, when we discuss basketball, I know that I always bring this up as like the money side, but um, now Carmelo Anthony didn't give a lot of details, which I mean, makes sense why he wouldn't give a lot of details about what's getting discussed and what the players want and what the uh, NBA is willing to give or not give and what demands are being made and things like that and what changes to certain rules and amendments because um, it has to also do with like substance abuse um rules are also covered by the players um by this agreement excuse me as well as um the minimum player salaries maximum player salaries rookie salaries early termination okay guaranteed versus non-guaranteed like different contracts okay taxes testing um what is going to be as far as like things when it comes to the D League um, with the rosters and training camps when it comes to the D League as well as the different benefits and buyouts. So there's a lot that goes into the agreement. Okay. So it's not just something simple. It's not just something easy. And I think that the reason why they always have these discussions every so often is because players change, money change, the association is growing. There's different um, there's more money to be made. There's different, um, there's just more involved and it's better to keep things current 
than to be dealing with old rules. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so Carmelo did say also, I wanted to wrap it up with saying this, but um, the players, the big thing is that the players don't want to lose out on the NBA's $24 billion television deal that will kick in this season. So, um, and of course they when it comes to money like that like you want to make sure that the players feel that they're getting a piece of that because you know without the players you don't have the nba uh but then of course i would assume that a lot of owners and the commissioner and things doesn't want all of that money to go just to the players and things like that and there's other things that this money has to go towards but so that's going to be what is going uh, that what we can see happening when it comes to some changes in uh, rightfully so I can see why the players would kind of be like hey you know it's kind of it reminds me of um you remember Chris Webber when he was in college and um if you guys watch ESPN 30s and all of that how um and I this comes up every few years it's probably going to come up this season as well um if not every season college basketball players getting paid for their services um and their likeness and their jerseys and things like that and you remember chris weber he in the fab five over there they were really upset because they weren't seeing any of that but yet the school was profiting off their likeness and off them so it's kind of reminding me of that that the nba uh professional players want to make sure that they get their cut of the 24 billion dollar television deal because you know without them without their likeness without their uh you know devotion without them playing there's nobody to watch you know so um that is something that we're going to keep an eye out on to see what happens hopefully we will not experience another lockout which i'm hopefully is you know that things can get squared away like i said it has until december 15th but it's already october it's the middle of october so that's going to come up quickly upon us especially given the fact that season is going to be starting just literally right around the corner so that's actually going to do it for this episode of the basketball podcast you have been listening to me i'm your host pauline you can listen to this episode again as well as any future and previous episodes on our network website that's gsmcpodcast.com as well as on itunes google play soundcloud and stitcher you can find me on twitter and facebook that's at gsmc underscore basketball if you care about any of the things that i've been saying and you feel like i'm totally off i would love to hear that or if you agree with me on things that i've said previously or in today's episode let me know that too once again you have been listening to the golden state media concepts basketball podcast we will talk to you later you've been listening to the golden state media concepts basketball podcast part of the golden state media concepts podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud and google play just type in gsmc to find all the shows from the golden state media concepts podcast network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program